Hello friends, I am Dr. Vardhaman Gankariya from Asian Eye Hospital Pune and we are going to discuss uh, today about spectacles, its obstacles and how we can overcome these obstacles by doing what is called as refractive surgery. So first of all, why do we get spectacles? As we all know, our eyes work like miraculous camera. Like in the camera, you have a front lens and that lens focuses the incoming light onto the sensor. Similar to that, if we look at the structure of our eye, our eye also has two lenses. One of them is called as the cornea, second one is called as the internal lens or the crystalline lens. And these two lenses focus the incoming light onto the eye to the sensor of the eye, which is called as retina. If the rays coming onto the cornea are focused very well onto the retina, we don't need spectacles. But because of the changes in the development of the eye, sometimes the length of the eye is either short or long or the curvature of the cornea, which is the power of the cornea, can be more or less. So because of this change in the structure of the eye, we get spectacles. So for example, there are three kinds of spectacles that we use. One of them is called as nearsightedness, in which we cannot see for far. In this case, typically, your eyeball size is bigger as compared to a normal size and that's why the rays which are coming onto the cornea are focused in front of the sensor of the eye, which is retina. So in this case, we have to use concave lenses to again focus this light onto your retina and that is how we can see clearly in myopia or nearsightedness. The second nature of the spectacles is called as farsightedness. This is also called as hyperopia. And in this case, typically, the shape of your eye is shorter as compared to a normal eye. And that's the reason that whenever the rays are coming onto the cornea, these rays don't get focused onto the retina, but they get focused behind the retina because of the shorter eye. In this case, we have to use plus powered glasses so that these glasses can focus the light again onto the retina and that is how you can see well again with the spectacles. The third form of the spectacles are called as astigmatism. We all know that there is a specific power called as cylindrical power. In this case, the shape of the cornea is different in two different directions. And that's why in one direction we are focusing the rays onto the retina but the light which is coming from the other direction gets focused in front of behind or behind the retina and that is called as astigmatism. So because of all these changes we can get spectacles today. So as rightly said spectacles are obstacles and that is basically because when we have spectacles we first of all become completely dependent on them. From the first time that we get up in the morning till the last time that we are going on to the bed, we require our spectacles for every small and big picture of our life. Second thing of course is that we have to sacrifice a lot of things because of spectacles. For some people hobbies such as use, uh, having contact sports, if they want to play cricket, football, if they want to go for swimming, they cannot do that without their spectacles and that becomes a real obstacle. Second thing is that certain career options are absolutely uh, uh, denied for people who have spectacles such as if you want to go for modeling, if you want to go for acting, if you want to go into defense such as in Navy, Army or Air Force, if you want to go into the police, you are completely denied that opportunity if you have spectacles. Uh, certain sections of our society unfortunately also thinks that if the girls have spectacles, uh, they also find difficult to find grooms uh, because of the orthodox uh, human nature of the Indian population. And the other important thing is that um, for people who want to be completely free from their spectacles, they use contact lenses, but the contact lenses also have their own maintain maintenance issues. They also have to be maintained very well. There is a recurrent cost involved. There is a possibility of infection. And that's why both spectacles as well as the contact lenses are seen as obstacles today. So friends, we all know that because the spectacles are known as obstacles, what if, if you don't want to use spectacles? Is there an option today? Is there an opportunity for you to get rid of your spectacles? And that is fortunately possible with science today. And that science is called as refractive surgery. Refractive surgery is a visual science in which we are doing procedures of the eye to completely get you independent from your spectacles. 
Uh, these procedures are now very safe. They are done in five minutes. They are completely painless procedures today with the advancements which are there. They have completely become bloodless and completely bloodless. There is no patch involved. There is no anesthesia involved with this. Uh, broadly, this is uh, the today's refractive surgery procedure. So in bottom line, I'll just tell you what is done is that if your spectacle number is between minus 0.5 to minus 10, then the refractive surgery is done on your cornea. So as we discussed, the cornea is the most important lens of your eye. So we change the shape of this cornea and that is how we change the focusing system of your eye and we focus the rays again onto the retina. That is how the refractive surgery is done if your number is less than minus 10. If your number is more than minus 10, then we cannot treat it on the cornea. Then we have to treat it inside onto the lens. And there is a specific technique which is called as implantable contact lens. It's a very elegant technique in which we just implant the lens inside and we can remove uh, refractive error or spectacular numbers from minus 10 to up to minus 30 diopters. So if you have spectacles and if you want to undergo refractive surgery, you would like to know that if you are a candidate or not. You are a candidate for refractive procedures if your age is more than 18 years of age. If your refractive error or the spectacle number is stable for 6 months to 12 months and there are series of tests which are done on to the eye on and on your body just to check if your eye is suitable for refractive surgery but most importantly we check the cornea which is uh, the structure on which we are going to do the laser we check the thickness of your cornea we check the curvature of the cornea and there is a test which is called as pentacam scan or corneal topography so if this a series of things are completely normal in you. Anybody over the age of 18 years can be a candidate for refractive surgery. So as we have discussed, if you have spectacles and if you would like to go ahead and become independent from it, and if you are seen to be a suitable candidate, you would like to know what are the different technologies available today. Uh, today, definitely all the technologies are extremely safe. And they can be broadly categorized into two different categories. One thing is called as the corneal lasers that we have discussed up to minus 10 number. The second thing is called as a lens implant procedure or implantable contact lenses between minus 10 to minus 30 number. But what I'm going to discuss to you about is going to be mainly the corneal lasers. So as we all have discussed, we get spectacles because the cornea is not able to focus the light onto your retina. So we would like to change the focusing system of the cornea. How can we do that? We can change the focusing system of our cornea by changing the shape of our cornea. So in refractive surgery principally, we reshape cornea in a controlled manner with a very very super precise robotic precision lasers. And with that in a painless manner, we can focus the light again on your retina. When it comes to the technologies and different options today of coming of doing the laser onto the cornea, there are three different generations of lasers. The first one, which is the oldest one, was called as PRK, in which we are changing the shape of the cornea onto the surface of the cornea. The second generation was called as LASIK. LASIK is acronym for LASIK in laser in situ keratomedusis, which means we are reshaping the cornea. It is a Greek term. LASIK was probably the most popular refractive surgery world over in those times, and it was innovated by my mentor, uh, Professor E. Olis Palikans. He was the first person in the world to perform LASIK procedure and all its subsequent advancements. What we do in LASIK procedure, as against in PRK where we are treating on the surface, in LASIK procedure we treat the core of the cornea. So what we essentially do is that we create a flap onto the cornea. This is a very thin and precise flap of about 100 microns. After that flap is lifted, we do a very super precise laser onto the cornea. And when we do that super precise laser, we reshape the cornea, we put the flap back in its position. The advantage of this technology is basically as compared to PRK, it is a completely painless procedure. The recovery is very, very fast. And it's a very elegant procedure with great wow effect. Now there are two, uh, there is one more advancement which has come in uh, LASIK, which is called as a bladeless LASIK. So previously the flap which we have spoken about used to be cut with a blade. Now we are cutting the flap with the laser. So it has become a all laser refractive surgery or all laser LASIK procedure. With this, the safety profile has increased to another level. And the third generation now is called as SMILE laser procedure, which is currently my most preferred technology of use for my patients. 
SMILE is acronym for Small Incision Lenticular Extraction. It's a bladeless LASIK procedure. At the same time, it's a flapless LASIK procedure. So we don't cut any flap in that. With a 2 mm small incision, like a keyhole LASIK, we do the entire procedure in this case. So with the SMILE, which is the third generation LASIK procedure, we have come a long way from the era of PRK. And that currently sums up what is the latest technology for refractive surgery today. So the operative and the post-operative process in refractive surgery is pretty simple. Uh, as we have discussed, the refractive surgery of today has become completely at another level. Uh, today, the refractive surgeries, whether it is LASIK, bladeless LASIK, or the bladeless and flapless LASIK, which is smile procedure, or if it is a lens implant procedure, such as ICL procedures, all these procedures can be done in 10 minutes. All these procedures are done with only drop anesthesia that means we don't have to give you injections we just put numbing drops in the eye and that is good enough for us to do the procedure the procedure totally takes only 10 minutes it's uh, as we have discussed without the need of any stitches any excessive cuts any bandage or any black goggles now in fact we give only transparent protective goggles after the procedure is done for a period of three days after the procedure is over uh, when the procedure is going on, the patients are extremely comfortable, they can move their eyes and but they have to focus on to the laser to get the best results. But they are very very comfortable, they don't have any pain generally speaking, no discomfort. But once the procedure is done, in fact they see like a wow effect, the vision improves very very acutely, very fast. On the same day, they are able to see as good as 80-90% of their vision with the glasses already. And as the time passes by, the vision becomes more and more clear. Usually on the day of procedure, they may feel a bit of greedy sensation in the eye, some mild foreign body sensation, some patients feel a very mild burning sensation, which goes away in a couple of hours with drops. Typically, none of the patients will have pain or excruciating intolerable scenarios post-operatively after any of the refractive procedures. Uh, once you have undergone refractive procedures, there are certain care that you have to take. Uh, first and most important thing is for the period of 3 to 7 days, you have to make sure that you don't go into scenario where you can get infected. Like avoid to go into the marketplace, avoid to go into shopping malls or very crowded offices or restaurants. Make sure that you don't put any water into the eye because the water itself can have microorganisms. So you should take uh, only bath onto the shoulder, don't take overhead bath. At the same time, make sure that you use your protective goggles so that you avoid yourself by getting hit because of any accidental trauma to the eye, which should be avoided. Uh, at the same time, it is important that when you sleep, you put plastic cups onto the eye so that accidentally you don't rub your eyes during, uh, during the first seven days of recovery. Uh, typically speaking, you have to start the drops on the same day of the procedure. The drops are typically given for a few weeks and that is basically to help you uh, get best outcomes and the best form of healing for your cornea. Uh, generally speaking, after the first three to seven days are over, if your recovery is complete, you can get back to your complete normal activities. And in about two weeks time, you can also go for eye makeup, you can go for swimming, you can go for things like mountaineering, you can travel uh, by flights in about a week's time or so. So generally speaking, as we have discussed, refractive surgery of today has come of age. It has become extremely easy procedure. The post-operative care is next to negligible and the outcomes are extremely accurate. The complications are extremely rare in well-selected patients. Thank you.